What's up, guys? Max Goble here for Rev3 Games, and I'm at GDC, and I'm with Phil Ring, who is the producer for LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. What is this game about? So, basically, it's about the Marvel heroes all coming together, fighting the Marvel villains who've all come together. So it was great. We wanted to do something that was a, a much bigger game than people were kind of maybe ever expecting. So it, it covers a whole host of Marvel families. So you get people like Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, uh, Avengers, X-Men. We wanted to bring them all together and do a new story for it. So. I just wanted to hear you say it. It's like music to my ears. <laughs> now, a lot of people were really, really impressed with the, uh, the Batman 2 DC superheroes and how much, how much bigger that was than the previous, previous Batman game. And you guys have made this even bigger than that. Is that, is that right? Yeah, for, for Marvel superheroes, we knew that we wanted to do something that was, that was going to do the, the world justice. And we were sat there going, OK, how can we push the technology to do things bigger and better? Uh, and just instantly, when we were looking at things like the, the Lego figures that exist, we knew that the Hulk is no longer, he's no longer a minifig. He's now a big fig. So we wanted to reflect that in the gameplay. So we knew that we wanted big scale lots of things to destroy, lots of things to smash, loads of enemies on screen, uh, and then to be able to explore some kind of fantastic environments. So we, we, we've been showing Grand Central Station as one location, but going to a whole host of other locations within the Marvel world, we knew that they all had to be like kind of really grand in scale. So. And you've all, got, you've all got New York as kind of kind of a hub world, right? Yeah, so it's, it's a New York, but it's actually not just a Lego New York, but more of a Lego Marvel New York. So when you're looking around, you'll go to things like the, the Statue of Liberty will be there, but of course it's a Lego version of the Statue of Liberty. But then there's also Marvel locations, so you'll find Stark Towers there. Um, that there's other locations based on different Marvel properties that are all correctly placed within New York City. So yeah, and you've got you've got the X Mansion. Yep, uh, X Men play a part. Yep, that's pretty good. And you've got you've got uh, I saw Asteroid M and Asgard there too. Yeah, there's some there's some great locations that we're gonna we're gonna dip into. Um, we really kind of want to give people the experience that if they are fans of any of these particular families, you can go to the places that you want to see, and they're all gonna look really cool and unique. So places like Asgard looks completely different to what, what like, the other locations will look like. So. That's that's incredible. And, and based on based on what you've shown off so far, you, I mean, it's obvious you're kind of uh, you know Avengers is very much fresh in everyone's mind, and of course there's the new Thor movie, new Iron Man movie coming out. Uh, and you've got Deadpool there for some for some fan service, but um, how how far back are you going? Kind of at, is this more um, movie focused properties, or are you also just kind of digging deeper into the the back catalog? No, very much kind of dig digging around. We we trying to get as much kind of uh, exposure to all the different types of Marvel that's out in the world. So we're not just kind of focusing on the movies. This is something that's going to also cover comics. So if you are a fan of the comic books in particular, there's things in there that you're instantly going to recognise. You're going to know where it comes from. So, uh, for example, we've got characters in there like Damage Control, who are the people who get sent in to clean up after the heroes have wrecked everything after their giant battles. Uh, it's something that's kind of more, more appealing to the comic book side. We wanted to make sure that we, we had those characters as well as the kind of the big film ones, because this is with over 100 characters in there. We, we knew that we wanted to do service to as many people as possible and listening to what people want to see and which characters they'd like to play as and then going, great, let's try and get as many of these in as possible and make them really cool. Hmm, okay. But uh, that's, that's really good to hear. But there's an interesting thing where you've got, you've got some characters that are very very, very family friendly. You know, you got Captain America. He's he's a good old boy. And then you've got uh, you know darker characters like Ghost Rider or Punisher or Deadpool who are uh, murderers or uh, demons. Uh, how are you? How are you kind of dealing with the, the sort of um, kind of gradient of of. Uh, subject matter with the sure. universe. So uh, I, I can't go into too many details on the actual characters other than the ones that we've announced, but what we know is that we can do a version of characters um, within the LEGO games that just is different. It doesn't have to be that dark and that uh, kind of harsh for younger gamers. We, we find that, especially when we're kind of working in some of the darker content, we, that's when we can actually be our funniest. So we'll look at it and go, OK, we, we've got these characters that people might uh, instantly go, ooh, that's quite a dark character. But we do a correct treatment. We make sure that they're accessible and they're, they're found, like, friendly for everyone but still appealing to the fans so they know who the characters are and they know they're kind of the attitude and personality that comes with them. Hmm. And this is, are we going to see a kind of alternate costumes? Or are we gonna, is there going to be kind of like collect a, a different costume? Will I be able to see, what I want to ask is, will I be able to see 80s Storm when she had her mohawk? There's a, a few variations in there, um, but we, what we've got is where we've actually got over 100 characters, we wanted them to feel much more unique. So it's not 100 characters, but for 50 of them are just of a different costume of someone else. We wanted to have a different variety in these, camera, in these characters. So there are a few alternate costumes, because there's some that we'd feel like we'd be missing out if we didn't include. Um, but yeah, the, the main kind of, it, it, there's not a huge variety of these alternate costumes, because we wanted more characters rather than more kind of different skins, really. 
Okay. And how much how much replayability are you looking at? Because I know in, in the previous games, like in uh, you know Lego Star Wars, for instance, very very early on in the you know in the game, you'd be like, oh, you know, you can't go here unless you're a bounty hunter, and you're not going to be a bounty hunter for quite some time. Uh, are there different sort of classes of of character? Yeah, definitely. We want to always have that free play, that kind of idea that you can come back, you can find new things when you're when you're looking with a different character with a different set of abilities. So as you'll play through, you'll start to learn the mechanics, and you'll go to somewhere that you may not necessarily have the characters, but you know the mechanic, and you're going, oh, actually, I need Spider-Man here, but I don't have him. Mm, I'm going to have to come back here. And so you, we've got that whole replay, free play side of the game. Um, and then that also get, just gets completely scaled up when you hit New York City as well. Okay. So we want people going around, finding things, uh, like smashing through walls with Hulk to find new areas and having that kind of experience, people constantly rewarding people for exploration. How, how big is the hub world? It, it, it's, it's quite a big, quite a big city. But what, what's great about it is we knew that New York City is going to be really kind of populated and dense, and so we wanted that feeling to it as well. So it's kind of like a caricature of New York, where we've got this layout where we've got all the correct places in the correct locations. But every corner there's got to be something. So you're going onto building rooftops, you're finding stuff to destroy, finding things to to unlock, and having that kind of experience. We want it always to be fresh and kind of just every every corner there should be something there. So and you can you can travel around with uh, you know Spider-Man web slinging, or you can fly with Iron Man. Are there vehicles too? Yeah, we've also included uh, vehicles. Um, there, there's some great vehicles in in the Lego sets that we knew that we wanted to include. Uh, and then there's also some cool things that are for particular fans of the franchises. Also, then go, God, I'd love to see this, or this would be a great thing to to be able to play as. So we wanted to include those as well. Oh, awesome. What about uh, what about co-op? That's always been a, a big thing because it, it gives uh, you know parents an excuse to play these children's games if they have kids themselves. Sure. Yeah, co-op's <laughs> always really really important to us, uh, and we want that how drop in drop out again, so parents can play with their kids. So we're always trying to tweak it, make sure that the cameras. Are the best they possibly can be, giving people options and variety so that people can play together. Um, it's just kind of really important for LEGO titles. What about the more hardcore um, more hardcore LEGO gamers? Will they be able to play online together? Uh, no online, unfortunately. Um, it's always one of these things that uh, we, we look to see if we want to include online and what it's going to bring to the title. And uh, we, we still feel that LEGO games really work best with two people sat next to each other playing in the same room. That's where the best experience is. Um, so that, that, that's kind of what we want to do that's, for Marvel. That's fantastic. What platforms is this coming to? So it's going to be on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, uh, Wii U, uh, PC, DS, 3DS, Vita. So trying to get it out there to as many people as possible. Uh, are the three? One big complaint, and uh, as a Vita owner, I, I've I've been so desperate for like a portable Lego game. But uh, so far, all the uh, all the Vita versions have been kind of um, you know scaled down. They've been the same version as, as the 3DS version, which hasn't been uh, quite as impressive. Are you making the any plans of making the Vita version be like a full uh, a full port of the of the console version or? We're always looking to see what we can we can do with the handheld platforms in particular to make a, a gaming experience for people who are on the move because that's what handheld gaming really is. It's, it's about people who are playing on the bus or in the playground and that kind of experience. Um, we haven't got too many details on the handheld version at the moment that we can go into, but we, we are trying to look at do something a bit different for this title to really give something fresh for people who've played Lego games, but on the handheld platforms. So okay, and any any plans for for next gen? Uh, no announcements other than the, the current platforms, unfortunately. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking. I have one last question before we go. Cool. Uh, there's a Guardians of the Galaxy movie in the works. Is there, is there any chance we're going to see a Rocket Raccoon in Lego form? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, is a, there's some really cool characters in there. Um, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see and see, see what we, uh, we go with in the roster. Man, I just want Lego raccoons. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for talking. Cool. Cheers. Uh, the you. game looks fantastic. You guys can stay tuned right here to Rev3 Games for the rest of our GDC coverage. I want this game to come out for my inner child.